Let me also write the same CI equation by actually subtracting E Hartree Fock from the beginning. So, let me write this equation little bit differently. So, my Schrodinger equation itself remember was H psi naught equal to E naught psi naught right. Okay. Let me write the Schrodinger equation by subtracting from the H E Hartree Fock. This is a number. So, I, I define a new operator H minus E Hartree Fock right psi, psi, psi naught and this becomes my E correlation psi naught correct because I subtract from the right hand side also E Hartree Fock. So, basically what I have done is subtracted E Hartree Fock from both left and the right hand side. So, I have got a new operator on the left hand side which is H minus E Hartree Fock. This operator is very often used in quantum chemistry simply because its Eigen value is directly correlation energy. I hope you appreciate why. If I take Hamiltonian, its eigenvalue is not the correlation energy, it is actually E naught. So, if I define a new operator which is H minus E Hartree Fock, then this operator eigenvalue is E correlation, eigenfunction remains the same which is exact eigenfunction of the Hamiltonian because I am simply subtracting a number. This operator is very often called and this will be actually much made much more clear when you have do second quantization later, but let me just write this. It is called normal order Hamiltonian. And very often it is denoted as Hn, okay, H subscript n and the entire equation now can be written in terms of this operator. So, Hn psi Hartree Fock plus C D psi D, I am just writing in a very cryptic term the same double C i in intermediate normalization. So, C naught is 1 equal to E correlation psi Hartree Fock plus C D psi D, okay, except that the Hamiltonian is now H minus E Hartree Fock. I have subtracted E Hartree Fock from the Hamiltonian, that is all. So, I do this exactly the same thing now. So, I have got psi Hartree Fock. H n psi Hartree Fock. What will be the result of this? Can somebody tell me? What is the average value of H n with respect to psi Hartree Fock? 0. Everybody agrees? Because H will give you E Hartree Fock, I have subtracted E Hartree Fock, so that is 0. So, this is gone. So, I can write this as 0 plus psi Hartree Fock H psi D into C D equal to E correlation. So, now you see I write the same expression of E correlation. Remember I had written this expression for E naught. Since I have to subtract E Hartree Fock, this, this actually went off. That is all. So, this I told you already this is E, e correlation. You remember minus B dagger C D. This is exactly my B dagger. This is my C D. So, your E correlation becomes B dagger C D. Right? Oh, sorry, yeah, H. Yeah. Of course, yeah. Now everything H is H. <laughs> I have already moved to normal order Hamilton. Okay. Uh, but I think the notations are important. Otherwise, it will confuse you. <laughs> I will not be confused, but you will be confused. I agree. All right. So, yeah, I am talking everything in terms of H n now. In fact, later on when we write, we forget about H. Entire many body is an H n. So, whatever is H is H n. Okay. Then you, you put this in another psi d, another doubly excited. So, you get D. I have already told you that matrix is D, right? The psi, psi doubly excited H n. But then now this D is different from the previous D because Hartree Fock is subtracted. Correct. So, this is a D is now defined as psi Hartree Fock, uh, sorry, psi doubles, H n psi doubles. So, what is the difference? The difference is that this D does not have E Hartree Fock. 
So, whatever is the old D, I am subtracting E, e, e hat refer from the diagonal, only from the diagonal of course, because number can be only subtracted from diagonal. So, I define my new D, I can call it D prime, okay, which is with HN and here it does not matter fortunately, you know why? Because you can only do from the diagonal, there is no diagonal element here. So, whether it is HN or H, the value is same. Because there are no diagonal elements. So, it does not matter that will become 0. You write E hat refog here, H minus E hat refog, E hat refog will come out, these are orthogonal. So, I hope you can see this. These are small, small things. I may ask you huh? <laughs> that are they, are they equal, are they not equal? Uh, I have to think. So, I did not bother about it, but here I have to bother. For the D, I have to bother. So, then if I write it this D prime. Then this equation then become d prime. I am now rewriting the same equation that I wrote there. So d prime is my uh, sorry, where, where I got lost. Yeah, d prime was my uh, this to side d to side d. But before that I had b right plus d prime sorry d prime c d equal to e correlation c d. Correct. So, I am rewriting the same expression with a normal order Hamiltonian, that is all. So, I am really not doing anything new. So, the same expression now I can rewrite. I am removing this part, maybe I will remove this part. So, now do the same thing, get C d from here, substitute the substitute in the correlation energy. So, you have d minus E correlation. Now, it is no longer E naught, it is E correlation. That is the only difference. My, when I am using D prime, it is no longer E naught, it is E correlation because everywhere Hartree-Fock is subtracted. That is the only thing. Times C D equal to minus E, right. So, you write C D as minus D minus E correlation into an identity operator inverse C D and your correlation energy equal to minus B dagger D prime Okay. So, you get exactly the same expression that we got there except that I am using D prime here, I am using instead of E naught E correlation there. Okay. So, when I when I want to do the, so I have, I have expressions only for the correlation energy. So, that is the only difference. I, I also had a expression for correlation energy. The difference is I had exact E naught here. So, how do I start the iteration? I have to write E naught equal to E hat repo. Assuming E correlation is 0, E naught would be E hat repo. And D will have E hat repo put in. I have subtracted the E hat repo right everywhere. So, now I am using D, D prime and now I can start the correlation by assuming E correlation equal to 0, okay. My first iteration starts from there. You have a D, sorry, you have a D inverse, you have a D inverse, D prime inverse and then you continue. So, in fact, when I do the first iteration, remember in my correlation energy, this would be Hartree Fock, E Hartree Fock, in my correlation energy, it is just D, D prime inverse, nothing else because E correlation is 0, correct. So, what will be the, what will be D minus E naught inverse? Now, I come back to this approximation, do the same approximation here. So, assume now D minus E correlation or rather you can simply assume that D inverse is diagonal. So, do the first iteration with E correlation equal to 0. So, start the iterative procedure by guessing E correlation as 0. So, what will you get in the first iteration? You will get only D inverse, right? There is no D minus E naught or E correlation or D prime. D prime inverse, 
is diagonal. Anyway, D is also diagonal. So, okay, I assume D and D prime both are diagonal. So, D prime is also diagonal and this diagonal will directly now come as the difference energies because now there is no E hot reflux to subtract. So, when I do the D prime, we will do this exercise. So, the only difference is depending on whether you use H or HN, there will be E hot reflux padded or not padded. So, here now E hot reflux is not padded. So, everything is just gone. If I was doing that, I had to write D minus E hot reflux inverse because your E naught cannot be 0. In the first iteration, E naught must be E hot reflux. E correlation is 0. So, when I subtract E hot reflux, I would have got the difference of orbital energies. With a D prime, I make a diagonal approximation and I assume this diagonal has only difference of orbital energies. I have to justify how good is this approximation from A to B. So, I will do a Slater rule for this D prime inverse and then justify how good it is. Of course, it is an approximation. There is some other term, but that is not bad to approximate. So, eventually what we will use for the CI is actually normal order. So, we do not use this anymore. So, we do not write E naught here. We write their E correlation. This becomes my D prime. So, everything entire CI equation is now in normal order and intermediate normalized. Is it clear? I will come back to this tomorrow. Tomorrow we have slightly longer time. I will come back to this and start again from here. Yes. It does not matter. The upper bound would be on E correlation. It is one and the same thing. E hot fog is always greater than E naught. Final E is also greater than equal to E naught. So, yeah. So, it does not matter. The upper bound will remain in E correlation. Okay. So, that just, it just shifted. Remember, normal order is nothing, but it is just shifting the entire thing by E hot reflux, just subtract. So, it is a mathematically, it is very simple. Okay. I will come back to this, but in the next class, what I will do, I will only derive the equations in normal order. So, it will become easy and then write what is D prime by Slater rule and show if it is diagonal, I assume it is diagonal and what would be the diagonal elements. So, that is what I will do. Psi ABRS, HN psi ABRS. HN essentially is H minus E hot reflux. How is it different from the orbital energy sum? So, what is this approximation? Then this will recover MP2. So, please note that the, the construction with HN or H is identical. There is no difference. It is just a, another convenient way of looking at. There is no new physics that I am introducing. Okay? Neither is a new physics is introduced by intermediate normalization. Okay? So, these are all convenient way of writing the same equations. But it is useful because later on HN would be used and intermediate normalization is also used for the perturbation theory and many other theories which will actually follow. So, it is better to write CI also as an intermediate normalization in which your C naught is just 1. So, when you diagonalize your one term is fixed as well. and write it and, and learn to write in terms of HN so that the eigenvalue of the HN is now directly E correlation, correlation energy. That is the only difference, not E naught because I am no longer interested in Hartree-Fock. That is already done. So, I can subtract that. So, I right away write in equations only for E correlation. So, there is no new physics being introduced, but it is just the way of writing. Okay, so, please read this, how to do this. And I think it should not be very difficult, dif different. So, this is where I had written the old one and these rest of the parts are HN, including this. Okay. But otherwise, this all the procedure is exactly the same. Okay. All right. And I think we will also do CISD. We will tell in the next class there are some pitfalls of double CI. So, what are the problems of CI doubles? We will also do CISD. And probably after that, I will only make generic comments about CI, why it is not a good method before we move forward to the second quantization and we will see when it comes, second quantization and diagrammatic forms of perturbation theory. Again, this will be done in a reasonably loose manner because these are highly rigorous. You know, I do not have that many, that many lectures to do diagrammatic perturbation theory. There are so many diagrams starting from Feynman, Goldstone, Hugenholz. So, we will just come to diagram. We will only give you the rules. Okay? The rules have been derived and at the end, we will go to methods which are neither perturbative nor variational and one of them is couple cluster and that is where we will try to close the lecture. Okay?